planet Cybertron is a wound that will not heal. No sooner does it close up and its pain recede, flooding the scrapped sphere with hope, than it is ripped open anew, bleeding, covering itself in cracking pools of black despair. And there is that much less hope left for the next time. And its pain resumes, even when the worse than before. Move faster, Autobot scum, or you'll feel the sting of Scorpnock's tail. Watching a Decepticon commander eunuch insincrate, your city's taking the spring out of their step, commander. <laughs> <laughs> and the prospect of being reduced to slag and smelting pool isn't quickening their pace either, trigger happy. <laughs> Let me deal with this lager slinger. I'll have him begging for a swim in the pool. No time, Skull Cruncher. We've almost reached their final destination. And you've reached yours, Deceptic. Our brother need help. Autobots, transform. Just what I wanted to hear, Borders Max Mills, let's party. Patience, Barry. The commander will choose their proper time. The time is now, Hardtrib. Roll out. Led by Fortress Maximus, a squadron of Autobots stare through the Decepticon ranks like a buzzsaw through a foil. The sounds of explosions mix with the cries of the wounded and dying, and very quickly the vast field quivers with one echoing moan of anger. Your ill stains as long as it wants. Too long as your tyrannical will cast its shadow over Cybertron. But no more your end, fast approaches. Welcome, Scorpnock. With the Prime Matrix, Fortress Maximus alone might be too much for us to handle. That machine must be on overdrive. Your cowardice desecrates the name Decepticon, but your destruction would serve no purpose. Come, transform to your vehicle walls. So we made it to fight for Maximus and his band of The Decepticons are escaping as in Fortress Maximus. Let's finish them off. There's been enough destruction. And, after doing what they can for the battle victims, the Autobots transform to their vehicle modes and head for their secret headquarters. A cave couched into the base of the remote Mountainese Mountains. Inside. All right, we sure showed those d didn't we? Give them their control spikes. I can't wait till we tangle with them again. We'll send them straight to the scrap you a piece of time. <laughs> Fools, there is nothing to celebrate. Cool your engines, Fort. We just won a big one today. Yeah, we showed those Decepticons who's king of the road. We won nothing, Cup, and we showed them nothing, Comrade. We are no better off today than we were 50,000 years ago, when this war between the Decepticons and the Autobots began. We are no closer to achieving a final Autobot victory. Even when we win a battle as we did today, we lose ground, cities crumble, friends fall, innocents perish. We and the Decepticons are more partners than enemies. We are connected by a circle of war and hate and death. It has no beginning and knows no end. And neither side has the courage to trust the other enough to break the circle. But what can we do to change this? Nothing. Except leave. Leave? And go where? There. What? Abandoned Cybertron? What of our Autobot brothers across the planet? Look, the Pan-Galactic Telescope is sighted on a world called Nebulus before you, the scope, projects an image of it. I have observed Nebulus for many voids. It is at peace, no evidence of war paints its surface. Cybertron, as it spins through the cosmos, is passing near now. I propose that all Autobots who desire peace come with me to Nebulus, then we can start over. But Fortress Maximum, thousands of voids ago, the great Autobot warrior Optimus Prime left Cybertron with many of his followers, and they were never heard from again. But his departure was unplanned, Cup. 
What difference does it make if we plan ours, leaving an act of cowardice? Do you accuse Fortress Maximus of cowardice, Hardhead? Remember what he did today in battle. No Autobot could be braver. Whether I am a coward or a hero is not the issue. I am weary. My joints creak from the corrosion of war without end. I cannot break this ring of tape that surrounds us all, but I can remove myself from it. No matter what you decide, I am leaving. The finality of Fortress Maximum's words silences all debate. Indeed, the other Autobots can do nothing else except mutely agree with their leadership's bitter, desperate decision. In the days that follow, Fortress Maximus and his followers devote their labors to preparing a spacecraft for a voyage to Nebulus. Finally, it is ready. Request permission to come aboard, Fortress Maximus. We are the Technobots. I am Scattershot, their leader. I am Afterburner. And I, Nosecom, we wish to join your quest for peace. Permission granted. They call me Repugnos. My handles grotesque. And I'm double trust. We like to get peace to chance to. The guns for the Obelots and we shall have no chance. And after everyone else has boarded. Farewell, son. I pray that, should I ever see your silver plates again, they shall deem unmarked by the ravages of war. The spacecraft warps across the void between Cybertron and Nebulas, and is soon parked in an orbit above its destination. The Autobots waste no time disembarking and descending to the surface below. What a strange looking world! It seems to be made primarily of materials other than metal, Repugnus. My life, the text of readings not for metal, this life, like I saw the carbon based. My research anticipated that time well. Mm, atmosphere isn't dangerous to transformer life, but dihydrogen oxygen molecules in the air pose a minor threat of corrosion. You depend more on your chemical analyzer than your own optical sensors, Brainstorm. This place looks like a paradise. Only if we're accepted by the world's inhabitants, Chromodome, Ambro, you, like all of us, have been programmed to speak the native Nebulese language. Find the native and ask him to convey this recorded message to the leaders of Nebulus. As you wish, Fortress Maximus. Besides, I can't wait to do a little exploring on my own. Soon. Hmm, perhaps those two are intelligent life forms. They seem to be engaged in a primitive form of communication. Excuse me, were you conducting a binomial data transfer? I prefer your radio wave input myself. It's much easier on the on the receptor circuits. What? Ah, just as I feared. Not intelligent enough to understand the Nebulanese? Good. What is it? I don't know, Marita. But I won't let it touch you. Stay back, monster. Creature of Nebulanese. You understand, I... Stay back? Night. Oh. Oh no, violence in any form was forbidden. Gord is big. My apologies, carbon-based life form. I meant no harm. Please take this to your planet's leaders. I I hope your companion can be repaired. The next day. Coraja, the capital of Nebulus, is the beacon that has guided this world through ten thousand years of peace. Serenity, security, and freedom. These are the principles upon which the city was founded, and which are still revered within the walls of the Council of Peers, the supreme governing body of Nebulus, and which soon will be sorely tested. Peers, we face a peril without equal. In our history, huge monstrous robots have landed on our world. Their intentions can only be evil. We are charged with protecting this world. I say we swiftly assemble our armed might and crush this threat before it crushes us. Lord Zarek speaks the truth. I agree, let's waste no more time talking. Your robots and my will arrive shortly. I must prepare for a pint. 
must be deployed. Pierce Harkner, with all due respect, I disagree. Gallant? As leader of the World's Watchers, I have some obligation to maintain peace and environmental harmony as those who founded my organization 10,000 years ago, when our planet teetered on the brink of destroying itself. We locked away all implements of war and have delivered our promise ever since. I say we risk believing these robots. Please, replay the hologram message we received yesterday. Greetings, leaders of Metals. I am Fortress Maxis. My people, the Ultimates, come to your world in peace. When your sun is at its zenith tomorrow, my envoy Burr will arrive to discuss our desire to live in harmony with you. Lies! Already one of his kind has struck down a nebulous citizen. In the visitor's gallery, overlooking the council chamber. No, Gord's injury was an accident. Sit down, young lady. Non-council members are forbidden to interrupt the proceedings. The robots must be eliminated. They must be given a chance to speak. We have nurtured our peace too long to allow it to wither before suspicion and fear. Let us have the courage to trust. Most council members are persuaded by Galen's argument, but not all. Crunk, come here. I have instructions for you. And so, the people treat this like a celebration, Galen. I hope they're right for your sake and theirs. We must put our trust in peace, Lord Zalek. Then we can better start now, for the envoy arrives. Duros, are your council guards in place? All security measures are to crowd safety are in effect, sir. Crank? I'm ready, Lord Zarek. And before the startled eyes are dissembled, a remarkable transformation occurs. People of Nebulous, I begin with the Mysterium Peace Planning Outlaws. All those jerks are too busy watching that hunk of junk to notice me and my magnetic polarizer. Huh? Run! It's a dog Instantly, the plaza swarms with panic nebulans, all trying to flee from Blair, but not all succeeding. Time for my next phase of the plan. Crunk, summon my patient on militia. This fine robot. No, you don't understand why I don't know what my arm moves like that, right? No sense trying to reason with these things being nothing. I say nothing changes what's happening. What are they giving me? And so Blur speeds away, his audio sensors ringing with the cries of the injured and the curses of the betrayed. Soon, at the Autobot encampment. Only some mother and laser burns, Blur. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Laser, right? 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 I don't know Make Elsewhere, in the remote Arvasian range, a hovercraft snakes its way among the forbidden peaks and lands. A lone figure emerges, a man whose life is no longer his to control. Duty forced him to come here, and recent events pointed the way to this place. The place he had prayed he would never see. Later, at the Autobot encampment. I say we try to talk sense to these creatures. They don't understand sense, Chromadrow. No, their nebulons are just anger and we must allow them time to calm down before for trespassing. I'm receiving readings, numerous life forms approaching from the east. Perhaps the nebulons have sent a delegation to open a dialogue with us, Hyder. Let us go and greet them. No, it's a full frontal scale attack! Um, but the other Autobots feel differently. We've got them on the line, Galen. Should I give orders to pursue? Until the last robot has fallen near us. Fortress Maximus said this world evidenced no capacity for making war, Cup. This is a one time I'm glad he was wrong, Hydra. The commander said no fighting, retreat! And be shot in the back, no thanks. Oh, Cup! We'll never, never prove our peaceful intentions by fire and negligence. I've never run away from, from fight commander. commander. You will now, and you will have to fight, fight me. No, no more. more! With Fortress Maximum covering the retreat, the Autobots disappear into the nearby woods, where the dense foliage prevents the nebulas. War machines will follow. Later, they'll, they'll destroy, destroy us if we do nothing. nothing. 
already half of us are seriously damaged. I'm tired of hiding and isolating with friends and ourselves against these creatures. Besides, we can't stay much longer in this swamp when we're going to hide and we need to pose a serious desert to her. Let's fight our way out. Enough! Don't you hear what you're saying? You're suggesting we do the very things we came here to avoid doing. Return to Cybertron will only make us part of the old victim of hate, and waging war with the Mandalorians will only create a new one. But what other choices do we have for this maximum squad? We must try again to prove our good intentions to the Mandalorians, whatever the sacrifice. We must be brave enough to wage peace.